Hi guys, welcome to another lecture and today we'll be discussing something about how to interpret ABGA. So interpretation of ABGA is a very important topic and before I begin, I would like to request you to like, share and subscribe to the channel if you haven't already. And you can see all my social media handles over here and if you are interested in studying pediatrics, if you are a FMG graduate, if you are a, a neat PG aspirant, next aspirant or a pediatric resident, please check out my app. All the links are in description below. There are wonderful courses and multiple free classes on the app. Okay, so very important in ABGA for interpretation of ABGA. <clears throat> we first need to know the arterial values, normal values. So normal value of pH is 7.35 to 7.45. Normal value of PO2 is 80 to 100 millimeter of mercury. Normal value of PCO2 is between 35 to 45 millimeter of mercury. SpO2 is more than 95, more than equal to 95. Okay, bicarb. Bicarb is between 22 to 26 milliequivalent per liter of blood and base deficit. Okay, base deficit is from minus 2 to plus 2. Okay, so these are the normal values of ABGA. Now, for interpretation of ABGA, for interpretation of ABGA, first you need to see pH and PCO2. If the values of both are going in the same direction, same direction, <clears throat> okay, and if they are going in different direction. So, what does this mean? So this means that if the pH is less and PCO2 is also decreasing. So this is the same direction. Both of them are decreasing or pH is increasing and PCO2 is also increasing. Okay. So the arrows are same the values of pH and PCO2 both are changing. So same direction means that it is a metabolic problem. Okay, the same direction shows that it is metabolic problem and obviously the other one has to be respiratory. It is opposite. Okay, it is going in the opposite direction. pH increases and PCO2 decreases or pH decreases and PCO2 increases. Okay, so this is the respiratory problem. Now, when you have the presence of bicarbonate in the uh, the metabolic causes so it might go in the same direction so this is metabolic acidosis when the ph is decreasing pco2 is decreasing and bicarb is decreasing it is metabolic acidosis if ph is increasing and the hco3 minus is also increasing okay it is also increasing so it means that metabolic alkalosis okay then if you have pH increasing and pCO2 decreasing, it is respiratory alkalosis. And pH decreasing, pCO2 increasing, it is respiratory acidosis. So I hope you understood about this. Now we will just see an example that pH is 7.3. Imagine that the pH is 7.3. So pH is low. Okay. pCO2. pCO2 is 60. So it is increasing. The, uh, the PCO2 is increasing. The, the, the direction of the arrows is opposite. So, so this is respiratory acidosis. Okay. In the same way, if the pH was 7.3 and the PCO2, PCO2 was 20. So the next thing you see is bicarbonate. Okay. Bicarbonate and bicarbonate is 10. So pH is also decreasing. PCO2 is also decreasing and bicarb is also decreasing. So this is metabolic acidosis okay so i hope you understood with the example that what direction depending upon uh, you know where the arrow is going you can easily diagnose if it's, it is it metabolic or respiratory now uh, uh, you know the entire lecture is uploaded on the app so you can go and watch it but uh, just i'll show you the basics that how to see that if the abga or the acidosis alkalosis is compensated or not so how to differentiate it? So firstly, we will come uh, divide it into respiratory and metabolic. Respiratory and metabolic. Okay. In the respiratory, again, we can, the respiratory, again, we can divide it into uh, acidosis and alkalosis. And further, we can divide them into 
acute condition and chronic condition now why is it important acute and chronic that is because see when metabolic condition is acute the respiratory compensation is almost immediately so if the metabolic cause is you know it is if it is in short term or if it is in long term it doesn't matter the patient's compensation will be immediate so when there is metabolic acidosis carbon dioxide washout begins immediately but in the opposite scenario that if there is a respiratory condition then the metabolic compensation for that respiratory compensation takes time okay so that time is taken by the kidney that is why the formula of compensation differs depending upon if it is a chronic condition for respiratory acidosis or alkalosis or if it is, is it a acute condition okay so what is expected so with rise rise of see in in acidosis there is a rise in pco2 so for pco2 rise pco2 rise for 10 mmhg above above 40 mmhg so each 10 rise above 40 mmhg in pco2 has to increase has to increase bicarb by 1 millimole per liter above 24 so what does this mean that if in pco2 acute condition if the pco2 is 50 then the expected bicarbonate should be 24 plus 1 25 okay so this is the expected bicarb if it is not achieved then it is uncompensated if it is achieved then it is compensated so this is very very important in the same way, in chronic, for every rise in 10 mmHg above 40, increase in bicarbonate, increase in bicarbonate should be by 4 millimole per liter. Increase in bicarbonate should be 4 millimole per liter above 24. So, in chronic, for example, if the PCO2 is 50 then the bicarbonate should be at least 28 because 4 24 plus 4 28 so that is the expected bicarbonate rise okay while in alkalosis it is same for every fall of 10 millimeter of mercury below 40 the bicarbonate decreases by 2 millimole per liter below 24 Okay, and in chronic again 1040 bicarbonate gets less by 5 millimole per liter below 24. So this is how you can, you know, see that if it is compensated or not, if that target is not achieved, if the bicarbonate when in acute condition, bicarbonate should be 25, but instead of 25, if it is 24, then it is uncompensated. In metabolic, it is comparatively easier that in acidosis, we use a formula known as Winter's formula. Okay, Winter's formula and in alkalosis, the expected uh, PCO2 is 0.7 into bicarbonate plus 21. That is the formula for metabolic alkalosis. In detail, I have explained in the lecture on my app. So you can, uh, you know, check it out. And again, in metabolic acidosis, we can further divide it into high anion gap and normal anion gap, which is not applicable for any of the uh, other types of metabolic abnormality. That's all for today, guys. I hope you like the video and I'll see you in the next one.